Oh, hey. It's pretty intense. Uh, so what is this talk not going to be about? How to use Nginx. Um, it's not, it has nothing to do with uh, setting up an Nginx server and making sure your configuration is set correctly and like running a web server. It has everything to do with writing what are called modules, which are basically like plugins or whatever the term will be for whatever you're used to, that get used inside of Nginx um, as part of the operating procedure. And I will go into that in a moment. So uh, why am I even bothering to make a talk about this? It's just a plugin. Well, writing these modules are like notoriously difficult. Um, because there's actually no, no documentation from Nginx themselves on how to do these. They're just like, yeah, you can write modules. And you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. And the foremost authority on writing these modules is a blog post from 2007 um, that's occasionally updated. Um, the last update was in 2017. So that's fun. Um, and if you don't want to do something even slightly different, than what's in that 2007 blog post, good luck, because there's absolutely nothing out there to assist you other than just looking at Nginx source code and going like, well, how do, how do they do it? And then squinting at GitHub um, or their HG solution because they use Mercurial for their source code as opposed to Git. Um, thankfully, there's a copy for, on GitHub, so you don't have to do that. And yeah, like I mentioned, you have to read a lot of Nginx source code if you want to do anything that's even remotely different than uh, like how to say hello world. So you want to build a module. Well, there are three different paths forward if you want to build an Nginx module. Um, there's a handler. What Nginx handlers do is that they're basically the part of the Nginx pipeline that creates the response. So when, when you hit an Nginx server, it's going to process your request, your HTTP request, and it's going to output an HTTP response. A handler is what, is what was, is responsible for creating said response. So it will allocate the memory, it will put uh, the values into the buffer that are needed, like the response headers, as well as like the actual response body, and all that stuff. The filters, which, are that, which operate after the handlers, are basically used to edit response body and headers in real time. So those are just kind of like after the, the response has been formed, they're sent through the filters, and the filters can do quick edits to like make minor changes. So like if you wanted to write an Nginx module that would like make sure that uh, all of your script tags had a SHA sum on them for HTML, right? Uh, that could be done in real time in an Nginx module that does that for you. Um, and the purpose of that would be to protect you, from someone from injecting a script, uh, injecting code into one of your script tags. Um, and then finally, there's load balancers. I'm not going to go too far into those, but um, they are exactly what they sound like. So Nginx modules that are just load balancers are for you to add like specific logic to how Nginx will proxy your request either to other Nginx servers or just internally how it's going to handle that request in its pipeline. Um, and of course, you can just mix and match these three different types. Um, and we'll get into like the code. This is a very code-heavy presentation. You'll see in a sec. Um, to maybe you want a handler that also has a filter on the back end, or you just want a filter, but you also want to do a handler for a very specific request that's coming in. You can do all of that in just one module. You don't have to create like a one for each thing you want to do. And each one of them have their own little like niche differences between each other that just make them oh so different that makes implementing them oh so hard. So let's talk about some code. So here is what a generic module will contain. There's quite a bit of stuff on this slide, but there you can look at this. This is actually segmented into two separate modules. We have a hello world module on the left, and then a module that will, oh, I didn't set up the demo, so we'll, uh, we'll have a demo. I can show you later, though, if you want. That's very unfortunate. Um, there is a other module on the right that I wrote called Headshot, and I'll talk about that in a hot minute. So uh, this is a struct that you write inside of your module. Um, its type is nginx module underscore t. Um, you'll note when you look at the, the code that you're going to see, 
Nginx has its own type for almost every single type that you can possibly imagine. Um, so, like down here, you'll see Nginx string. It has its own string type. Um, it's great. So, over here, this is what a basic Nginx module struct will contain. You'll say the version of the module. This is basically a constant at this point because there's never been a version 2 released. So this is the only type of module that there is. Um, the second is the module's context, which I will talk about in a moment. Um, but basically, it's the context in which the module will be injected into the pipeline. The commands, uh, which we can see some examples of a command down below. Basically, what the commands do is a, it's a separate struct, which basically will say, how do I call, as a user, this module to start working? So like here, you define what's called the directive. So, it, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, Nginx configuration files. In your nginx.conf, you would typically say a directive, like you would say proxy pass, if you wanted to pass something to a proxy, or as a proxy. Or you would say, you would say server, if you wanted to denote the server string. That's what this directive is here. Here it's just called hello world. So if you wanted the hello world module to run in your nginx conf, you would just say hello world. And then it would be like, okay, um, here is how you dictate how nginx will handle the directive. So like sometimes you want to say hello world on, or you want to say hello world off. But sometimes it's not that easy. Sometimes you want to say something like a header. So you would say add header host, and you wanted to add a host header. Um, that's more complicated than just on or off, and you'd say what t the type of your parameters are here. This is a call to a function that we'll talk about in a minute. And then you need to terminate your commands with something called nginx null command, which is just a bunch of zeros. So moving back, that's what a command will look like. Basically, it tells how nginx will process the configuration. Then below, uh, we have the module type. This is an HTTP module. Um, I haven't seen many other ones, but I suppose you could write a TCP module, because uh, Nginx can handle that, I believe. And then down at the bottom, uh, so then we also have like init master. So if you're going to add something into the pipeline of Nginx while it's starting, when it's initializing its master process, which is the first thing that Nginx starts when it starts, then you would put it in there. If you want something to start when the module is initialized, then you'd put it in the init module section. If you want something to get run when the process starts, when the thread starts, when the thread exits, when the process exits, master exits. You have lots of little endpoints that you can put in. And then as an example of one, over on the right, we see the Nginx headshot module gets put into the init module. And what it's going to do is that it's going to take uh, the Nginx configuration file that was read in by Nginx when it starts, and it's just going to force Nginx to run all of its processes as root. Um, which basically means that no matter what you put in the Nginx configuration file, Nginx will run as root, which is a pretty neat thing. That's why Headshot's pretty cool. So um, that's basically the end of that, and then you have to end it with the padding, like I said. Down here below, we have um, the Nginx HTTP hello world, which is part of the configuration setup. So this is basically some boilerplate code that you use to process the parameters. So that was the on or off thing I was talking about before. Um, okay, so this context thing I was talking about. This is about when you want to hook in your module to the Nginx pop, uh, pipeline specifically. So like, you have a pre-configuration before the configuration is loaded, post-configuration after the configuration is loaded. You have the create main configuration. So inside the Nginx con uh, configuration file, you have a a section called main, you have a section called server, and you have a section called location. The main is just the outermost, it's not necessarily denoted. And then you can just put here uh, different hooks that you want to activate when the configuration is read. So over, uh, we don't do anything for like a basic hello world module, but on the right side for headshot, uh, we hook into post configuration. And basically what we do here is that after you read in the configuration file, we inject our module into what is called the HTTP content phase handlers, which is basically a linked list of different handlers that handle the content that's responded to. So basically, this is a um, handler that will process a response. So we need to hook it there, um, where the hello world just returns something, regardless of what's going on. 
This also puts it first, it's just syntactically, so headshot is supposed to be malicious. That's why it's a little bit different. So here is an example of what Hello World uh, does, the Hello World module. Um, basically what the, the core logic of your module itself, how it will handle a request. So this is one of the ha a handler module will do. So as you can see in the top here, we take in an HTTP request. Um, they do some buffer allocations. They set some response headers. They allocate the response body. And then they're going to attach, basically, this is a string that just says hello world. And then they set the header status to 200 and then they correct the content length, and then away it goes. Um, and this, this is sending the headers, but this down below is actually slight diff slightly different, because like I mentioned previously, after the handlers are done, they're passed on to the filters. So this is just calling the filters after we're done with it. So this, this hello world module will literally just take any request that Nginx gets and just return the string hello world. This is an example of a filter module. Very unfortunately, I couldn't find a picture on GitHub. This is what the mercurial equivalent looks like. Um, so basically what this one does here is that it will find anything, uh, the letter capital X, and if it does that, then it returns a 401. So if in the response that was generated by the handlers, there's any capital X anywhere, it will just return a forbidden. Um, so that's just a an example usage of a handler. I don't think there's any practical reason for that, but there's some other things that are much more useful for doing inline um, maturation, like I mentioned earlier with the uh, SHA sum for the script tags. Again, here's some stuff from Mercurial. This is the load balancer solution. I'm not gonna get into it because these get very, 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 very complicated. Um, but basically this one here is hashing the incoming IP address and it's going to determine from that hash which upstream server to send it to. Um, but that's an example of what a load balancer module could do. Because by default, Nginx's load balancing is pretty basic. Um, I think it just does round robin. Um, so if you want to do anything else, you need to load a module that does something a little bit more advanced. And that's basically what these load balancer modules are for. Sad. Um, sad. <laughs> that I don't have that set up right now. I forgot about this. Um, but what I can do is I can show you, um, I can show you some copy and pasted output of it. <laughs> so so we ha in theory, we have Nginx running on a server. Uh, I guess it's localhost in this situation. Um, and what we can do, can everyone see that? I think so, I just wanna make sure, cool. So what we can do um, is if we curl localhost and then we do tac tac header, which says basically I'm setting a specific header in my HTTP request, and I just say headshot, and then the value is lsla slash temp, and then it will literally return the output of that command. That's what headshot does. Um, do I do an example with who? No. Headshot, like I mentioned earlier, uh, remember it changed who Nginx runs worker processes as, so this will be executed as root. Um, you can also touch things. Um, this is another example of ls. And then below is what happens if it doesn't have that specific header. So um, what we have here is just curl localhost, and then because that header was not passed, my module will not actually act on the response body or will not create the response body. So Instead, it will just return whatever Nginx would normally return, which here is the Nginx example page, but it could be a fully functioning website. Um, and then here's what the process tree would look like if this, if, if this, if headshot was used for a reverse shell. Um, basically, you're gonna see like the master process and then the child, that's the worker process because that's how that works. And then below that, you see this shell, ex shell execute of like a netcat of bin bash back to your port, basic reverse shell stuff. Um, but it would be kind of obvious to see that. But that's just what it looks like, it's kind of cool. Uh, so let's headshot, going back. It's kind of a cool thing. Okay, so the main takeaways, um, Nginx modules are kind of rough, um, but you can do basically anything you want with them. 
You can make Nginx do anything that you could possibly imagine. You could actually write an Nginx module that's just an entire website, and it serves the website <laughs> from inside Nginx. So Nginx modules can actually be um, either compiled into Nginx itself, or they can be loaded dynamically. So what that means is that I could compile my module and just have it be a standalone thing that I could just plop into the modules directory, and Nginx is like, okay, and then it loads it in, and then headshots on your box. Or I could literally just compile in my module right into the Nginx binary, so there's actually no artifacts on your box um, unless you were to grep in the binary itself for headshot. But that's really easy to change that string. Uh, was that? Can you like check do a checksum? Check that back? Yes, but the problem is Nginx compiled on G, uh, GCC version 4.3.2.0.1 will be different than 4.3.2.0.2, and the checksum will just be yikes. Um, at least in theory. <laughs> uh, so you can edit responses and you can load balance requests. You can edit core Nginx functionality. So like the root thing, that was not really documented anywhere. That was just like me going like, oh, after you load the configuration file in Nginx, I can just say, oh, I read root. Cool, so now all the workers are running as root. Um, modules can be compiled in or like dynamically like I just mentioned. And this is a fun fact, Nginx itself is just a collection of modules. So underneath the hood, that's all Nginx is. There's a basic runner, and then they built a bunch of modules. Um, so like over here on the right, we literally see the command stack, like we saw with all those other modules that we were looking at. This is Nginx.c. So if you were to go to Nginx.c, this is what you're gonna see, um, which is the exact same code. And then finally, but not least, uh, this is possibly the greatest case study for the need for documentation, because it is god awful to write these things. Um, so yeah, it's very important if you create something to document it, especially if you intend it to last, because there's a lot more things that people could be doing with modules, but no one knows how to fucking write them. Questions? Okay, yeah. Yes, you, you, yeah, the first one. You, you, I believe you need to say, uh, oh, well, you can say load all modules from this directory. But, yeah, in the Nginx conf, you would write like, load modules, or I don't know the exact directive, but, but guess what? That load modules directive is also a module, right? It's just another module, because that's all Nginx is. Any other preguntas? All right, thank you very much. And next up on our presentation list is a, uh, a fellow who goes by the name of Joseph. Um, he will be presenting on CVE 2016 6366. Um, so without further ado, 